This is Mark Boosin, senior reporter for Lay Press, and we're here today speaking with the president of the organization of staff analysts, Bob Krogan. Bob, welcome. Thank you. Bob, recently, uh, I guess it was about a month ago, maybe several weeks ago, uh, Mayor Bloomberg decided to veto after the city council had passed it, the living wage legislation. And when you heard him give his reaction on on his talk radio show, how did you? How, what was your initial reaction? To I found it very interesting how much passion he showed. The veto didn't surprise me, but did he go on television and be really quite angry because? Somebody who had been given a million dollars or more of my money, of taxpayers' money, would now be required to pay $10 an hour to the security guard. And he got really angry over that, like, this is going to chase all the job creators out of New York City. And I thought to myself, all the rich are going to leave immediately because they have to pay $10 an hour to the security guard? And does the mayor ever consider where the security guard has to live when he's only making $10 an hour or less? No, he doesn't much consider that. So the fact that he got angry about that makes me feel a little bit better about the fact that I get angry at him all the time for being an insensitive creep who goes around picking on the little people while puffing his own friends all the time. I know he made his money by dealing with the Wall Street people and getting all his machines put into all these stock exchanges. They are the ones who brought the crash. We didn't do it. The security guards didn't do it. They did it. Why is he telling us now we must sacrifice to keep him and his friends rich? That's very upsetting. Bob, what do you think would have been his reaction had the original living wage bill had not been, because obviously there had to be some compromises made before it could even pass the city council or get or get past the city speaker, that is. Uh, what do you think his reaction would have been if that original bill had passed? Well, I assume he'd be twice as outraged and, and looking to take revenge in every direction. How can we do such a terrible thing to New York City? My God, if you start taking care of the little guy, well, there's so many of them. You don't want to take care of them. But your friends, that's okay. Take care of them. Seventy billion dollars and a, a budget that's probably, I think, from the last I read, bigger than the budgets of I think forty-eight states in the country. But yet there are services that he claims that we don't have. He claims that there isn't enough money uh, to provide for. Uh, but we know that there's money. That money has been uh, used to hire private contractors to provide services that have traditionally been provided by public employees. What's your reaction to that? Well, I had the good fortune last uh, summer to go to Governor's Island for the day. And I took a free ferry. It cost me nothing, but somehow I think I ended up paying for it somewhere. But I took a free ferry to Governor's Island. And out there, they've done marvelous things. They've made the place beautiful. It's like a paradise. Double-decker bicycles, all kinds of wonderful stuff going on. And I didn't have to pay for this, but somebody paid for this. I wonder who it was. Anyway, when I got off the island, took the ferry back, I walked up along Battery Park City. I was around for the building of Barry Park City. That was built by an authority. An authority means, I guess I built it. The public built it. And I remember at the time they were talking about affordable housing in Battery Park City. They did talk about it for quite a while. Somehow it turns out there's none of it all there. They apparently traded it to places in the Bronx or Queens. And all they have down there is very expensive housing. On the other hand, I'll tell you, you get good value for your money. The sanitation services were far above the amount I get to see in the Bronx or Manhattan or Upper Manhattan or Queens. When it comes to things like all the city services that you want to have, they seem to have all of them. I was there when the Parks Department had come in to do puppet shows for the children on a Saturday. How lovely. The very, very rich are now being given public public puppet shows on the part of the Department of Parks. And they had the sanitation department there to disassemble the stuff, make sure all the litter was picked up. I said to myself, isn't life wonderful when you're rich and living in the city of Mayor Bloomberg? Bob, what was your reaction when you heard that uh, Governor Walker uh, was able to defeat the recall vote? Well, I was disappointed, but I also am old enough to have been around from before agency shop. So some of my fellow union presidents were probably more dismayed than I was because I kind of nick knew. In fact, I could find something positive in the figure, the answers they were giving us afterwards, which other people might not realize is positive. Such as? They indicated that, having done polls, that 40% of the formerly union uh, members, families, from public sector area unions, were voting against the union union's point of view on this. That's okay by me, because what happened was agency shop was gotten rid of, meaning that a whole bunch of people dropped out because they're cheap. But 60% of them still voted the union way when it came right down to it. So even the ones you think aren't your friends, some of them are your friends, if it doesn't cost them any money. One of the things I learned a long time ago was 
part of the problem in humanity, I guess, is that people like to be freeloaders sometimes, and a portion of the public likes to be freeloaders on taxes, on union dues, on anything else that's communal. But on the other hand, when it comes to their own services and their own needs, they're, they're very much in favor of all of us and the big government. Bob, thanks for your time. Good